everyone, uh, Keeper Eric here once again here at Elmwood Park Zoo for our Zoo School Live. And today we're going to get super sneaky with our sneakiest resident here at Elmwood Park Zoo, Sirius, our black rat snake. So Sirius here is a western black rat snake. So he has a little more white into his pattern uh, compared to the eastern black rat snakes that you find around here, which are almost jet black. Um, he is currently 11 years old. He was born September 24th in 2008. Uh, black rat snakes in the wild can reach about 15 years of age. Um, so he is well on his way right to be more of a senior citizen, but he is still spicy and active and loves to uh, play around with enrichment. And uh, right now he's just kind of hanging out on the stick and kind of smelling all the good smells all over it right now. So Sirius here is about five feet. Um, normally uh, black rat snakes on average are more around three to six feet. However, there are some record holders out there that can be up to 10 feet long. And that's a very large snake and actually one of the longest snakes in the US. The only ones that sometimes will beat these guys out are the indigo snakes down in Florida. But the black rats are a nice diverse snake that is pretty much found throughout the entire United States. Um, if not a black rat, another rat snake would most likely be found there. Um, for example, a lot of people might have corn snakes as pets at home. Corn snakes and rats, uh, black rat snakes are actually uh, very closely related. It's kind of more just a different color pattern and normally found in a slightly different location. Uh, corn snakes got their name, however, uh, because they thought, oh, this snake is living in the cornfields, it must like eating corn. Uh, it's not in the cornfields because it's uh, chowing down on ears of corn. It's in there because it's uh, just like our friend here, Sirius, loves to eat rats. Now, Sirius doesn't strictly uh, eat nothing but rats, um, and his cousins out in the wild don't either. Uh, these guys will go after when they're more full-grown adults, different mice, rats, birds, and even eggs. So as he's kind of showing off right now, um, as he's uh, just chillaxing up there, um, they are very excellent climbers and excellent swimmers as well. Now, even though uh, these guys can eat frogs and uh, little fishes and all that. That's normally more along the lines of when they're babies. Uh, once they're older, they go after things that are a little more full of nutrients like uh, chipmunks and squirrels and things like that. Especially with their bigger size, they can take out something uh, closer to that size. Now, uh, they are predators. <laughs> Pretty much every single snake in the world is a predator. Uh, these guys are not venomous whatsoever. Um, but still, if you see a wild snake in the wild, even if it's venomous or not, it's always nice just to leave it alone. Uh, how would you like a giant coming out of nowhere and messing with you, especially when uh, all you can do is slither on the ground? But uh, these guys, how they catch their prey is they're constrictors, so kind of like a python. So um, the reason for this black coloration and the different colors of all rat snakes is it's camouflage. So eastern black rats and western black rats um, are kind of going for uh, ambush predator kind of style where they're going to find a nice dark area that they uh, know is a very common possible mammal trail. Um, and then they're going to wait kind of on that trail because mammals and birds and a lot of different animals uh, like their routine, so it means that normally if a mammal has walked past there once, it's probably going to walk past there again, uh, and he'll just kind of wait there until the little mouse or squirrel comes running by, and he'll strike out, and then basically give it a big bear hug, and that's how he catches his prey. So uh, he also will climb trees if he smells birds, or um, one of their favorites is eggs. Eggs are very nutritious for them, so it's very important that these guys will eat eggs um, fairly often. Now you might be wondering how does a snake tell if it's a mammal trail or really finds any of that food sources that I'm talking about. If you look real close, he is constantly flicking out his tongue. And yes, as many of you uh, might have guessed, that is him smelling. However, the misconception is that the tongue is actually doing the smelling. The tongue is actually bringing 
the smells all around him. So as he's, uh, he's like, I smell that phone. I don't know about that. I'm going to kind of sneak over here and see what else I can check out. Um, so what he's doing is he's kind of sticking out his tongue and waving it in the air like he just don't care. And then he's bringing that smell in the uh, air that's stuck on his tongue into his mouth and rubbing it on what is called the Jacobson organ. Basically, uh, if you don't uh, remember the name Jacobson organ, that's perfectly fine. Just basically think of it as he got a nostril in his mouth. And basically he's rubbing that tongue on his Jacobson organ. That way it can smell. Now, snakes aren't actually the only animal that has a Jacobson organ. Uh, fairly common in most of your households is cats have it as well. If you guys especially have boy cats and you ever uh, see him kind of walking around and then all of a sudden it looks like he has a big sneeze or he's making weird faces with his mouth and uh, almost uh, snarling and a little foam coming out, that's him using his Jacobson organ as well. So even though cats can smell uh, like we can with our nose, uh, for pheromones, they will use the Jacobson organ, which is a little more uh, sensitive to slight disturbances and uh, smelling the different pheromones of other cats or other uh, creatures around. Also, uh, hoofstock have it as well. Uh, when our male elk is in rut, He's constantly running around with his lip turned up and making what we call snot bubbles uh, with his. Uh, and he likes to run around and sometimes he splashes up with a little bit of his snot because he gets very excited during that time. So with that being said, obviously a snake is just as cute as a kitten because they both smell the same way. Just saying. So. Uh, <laughs> That's how these guys uh, smell. Also, they do have a lot better uh, eyesight for certain things like infrared, body temperature, and all of that. That also helps them hunt and find uh, these trails. Because with that Jacobson organ, even though a mouse might have not been on that trail for, say, four days, he can still smell that uh, there was a mouse um, and that uh, it comes on this trail maybe every four days and he can kind of judge whether or not that's an active enough trail for him to kind of sit and wait for another prey item to come by. So he is obviously a snake and they are what we refer to as cold blooded, which is kind of an odd way to phrase it. Really, it's not so much that their blood is actually cold. It's just they save a lot of energy by getting kind of their muscles and their internal body temperature warm from their surrounding environment. So for us, how we could be out in the winter time and we uh, have that kind of, uh, you can kind of see your breath because obviously our body temperatures are normally regulated around uh, uh, our bodies with uh, just eating food as constantly as we do. Cold-blooded uh, animals get a lot of their energy from the sun. So he doesn't have to eat as often, but the problem with that is he obviously is much, much slower when it's colder out. Kind of like sometimes if you have a long nap and you immediately try and run and you cramp up. Same sort of thing, but a lot more extreme. So being that these guys really don't like cold weather so much, how does a snake like this survive in Pennsylvania in the wintertime? And the answer to that is brumation. Brumation is very similar to hibernation. Hibernation is basically where you're just fast asleep, couldn't be pretty much woken up by anything uh, through the entire time. Brumation, however, is more along the lines of they're asleep for short periods of time, but they still do wake up to take a drink, stretch out a little, move around. Um, however, they're normally not coming out of uh, their dens that they find. Most snakes go to the same den every year. And a fun fact um, for these guys is black rat snakes are very well known to uh, brumate with other snakes of various species. For example, these guys uh, will actually den with rattlesnakes and copperheads, which are venomous here in the U.S. 
Now, that unfortunately does mean that people mistake them for venomous snakes all the time. It does mean that they are nice and safe from predators like hawks and skunks and other things that might try and go after them uh, because they kind of have the bodyguards of the rattlesnakes and the copperheads. But unfortunately, when it comes to people, they see a rattlesnake or the fact, too, that the black rats are very well uh, diverse in uh, illusions where if they ever get scared from a predator or humans, they start shaking their tail in the leaves so they sound like a rattlesnake. And that normally is great when it's trying to scare off something that might try and eat it. But unfortunately with people that misidentify the fact of snakes holding their ground to, oh, this snake is attacking me and coming after me, means that unfortunately normally when uh, snakes and humans collide, normally the snake is the big loser. But as long as a snake, whether it's venomous or not venomous, you keep a good distance, you simply walk around it, and you really don't try and like uh, bother it too much, no snake is truly harmful as long as you give it the respect it deserves. And now we're gonna move on to some questions. Laura, what you got for me? All right, Keeper Eric, we have lots of good questions today. Love it. Sophia would like to know what they eat. Great question. So these guys, uh, normally in the wild when he's about five foot, Sirius's favorite things would be birds, rats, mice, eggs. But when they're younger, when they first hatch a lot of time, they more stick to kind of salamanders, frogs, and little things that aren't going to put uh, too much of a dangerous fight because obviously a squirrel uh, has some pretty big teeth on them and you got to be a big tough snake and uh, be fairly experienced as hunting before you go after something like that. But great question. Uh, Vivian and Laura would like to know how much does he weigh? Oh, great question. So he only weighs a couple pounds really. Um, obviously since these guys uh, have much bigger meals, uh, their weights do fluctuate very uh, drastically a lot of times. Uh, for these guys, they might be able to catch a couple pound squirrel and uh, it takes a couple of weeks for them to digest it. So these guys, um, right now, he's probably only like five, ten pounds at the most, but most of the time these guys weights do fluctuate uh, pretty drastically. But yeah, he doesn't weigh that much. RJ would like to know, how long his tongue is? Oh, great question. So um, he can stick out his tongue only uh, probably about two inches at the most if he really was trying. But a lot of time uh, it doesn't come all the way out because he's trying to smell. That's like his main way to see what's going on. And it doesn't take too much for him to stick out his tongue real quick, kind of catch all the air particles and bring it back in. But uh, if we were to open up his mouth, uh, probably maybe three inches at the most going all the way back. And we have lots of people who love him. We have uh, Marissa and Denise and Sonia have all commented how beautiful he is. Oh, well, thank you. And luckily, he has started shedding. You can kind of see he has a little bit of a hairdo going on up there on his top scales. Um, he uh, normally sheds very well. And with a snake shed, it normally comes off all in one piece. But right now, he has a little bit of... Uh, uh, his head uh, scales are a little still stuck on there, but he's swimming a lot in his exhibit and all that, so they're coming off fairly easily still. Megan would like to know, is he our only black rat snake? Great question. So he's our only one on exhibit, but education, you guys have one right now as well, right? And I forget it, or no? Okay. Um, Ronin would like to know what the difference is between a snake like this and a rattlesnake. Oh, great question. So actually, thank you, Laura, for bringing this out. So this is, um, oh, buddy, I know. There's stuff on the ground. Come on back up here. Boop, 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 boop. So he is what is considered a constrictor. He doesn't have any venom in him. His best way to hunt is literally he kind of grabs a hold of something, and his teeth are more like Velcro, and that it's his actual body uh, constricting around the animal that actually catches the prey. Whereas this is actually a rattlesnake skull, and you can kind of see the little Velcro kind of teeth. And actually a lot of time, if a non-venomous snake bites you, it kind of feels like you just got stuck with Velcro. But with this guy, you can see there's these giant fangs in the front. Obviously, they're gonna hurt a lot if they get you. 
So a rattlesnake, not uh, just the fact that it has that uh, classic tail at the end, um, and not all rattlesnakes actually have a rattle, but most do. The big indicator, however, is these giant fangs, which literally go into an animal's skin and would actually pierce through the skin and inject what we refer to as venom, which really is kind of a specialized saliva that, depending on the snake, does different damage to the animal. So it kind of just does a quick strike, and then it kind of uh, waits for the animal to uh, pass on, and then it'll go find it and then eat it that way. Great question. So we have a question from Rebecca and Francis. They would both like to know why his tongue is black. Oh, great question. So with an animal that is constantly uh, smelling the air, um, there's kind of two indicators. Number one is the rest of it is, is black. You don't want too many uh, color differences. Like if it's bright pink, that might uh, give away his um, location. But the other one too is for most animals that are constantly sticking out their tongues like that, well, you stick out your tongue all day in the middle of a uh, sunny day, you're going to get sunburned. So that's just a way to kind of help protect uh, their tongues as they're constantly sticking their tongues out exploring. Here, buddy, you want to go in the tree? Amelia would like to know, is he named after Sirius Black in Harry Potter? Yes, <laughs> because he's so magical. And Zachary would like to know, how old is he and when is his birthday? Uh, so he's 11 years old, and his birthday is September 24th. He died. So we have somebody who would like to know, Cameron, how high can he climb? Um, however high the tree is. Uh, they are very, very excellent uh, climbers, and they will climb 50 feet, even higher up into a tree if it means a delicious egg is at the end of it. And also, a lot of times, too, uh, it's a lot safer up in trees um, because you don't have as many animals on the ground. Granted, you have to deal with hawks and other birds sometimes, and obviously little birds don't just uh, sit by and let the snake try and eat their eggs. They'll try and throw them out of the tree, but he has such a great grip whenever he's climbing that even if they knock the top part of that off the tree, he still normally has a safety line attached to another branch. Faith would like to know, how long can he grow? Great question. So he, at the most, most likely just with his age, six foot if we're really lucky, but he's probably not growing too much uh, longer anymore, and he's around five foot. But some black rat snakes have hit records of 10 feet. So that's a snake that's actually going to be twice as long as he is. Gavin would like to know how often he sheds. Great question. So, um, it all depends on the season. In summertime, because obviously, just like in the wild, they're more active. Even though he's in a temperature-controlled building, they still know that it's wintertime and they kind of slow down and maybe they'll shed every other month sometimes. But when they're really growing, I mean, they could shed uh, once a month, even every couple weeks sometimes. Christian would ask, how do they have a hard skin? Oh, great question. So, I would not refer to his skin as really hard. As you can see, he's quite squishy uh, still. Uh, it almost feels like little seeds on kind of a squishy pillow. Uh, the scales kind of help uh, protect his skin slightly, but if a dog or something came around, uh, he doesn't have that much more protection than we do, unlike, say, a turtle. Stop trying to disappear down there. Harry, Harry would like to know what their lifespan is. Great question. So, uh, based on uh, record keeping so far, we know that on average, uh, kind of a um, good long age for them would be 15 years. Uh, but, just like humans, sometimes they live a little longer, sometimes they live a little shorter. Um, not based on anything, but just the genetics of them. So Henry, who's turning 10 tomorrow, happy birthday a day early. Yes, happy birthday. Would like to know, would Monty the Python or Sirius win in a fight? Oh, okay. Um, hmm. So, obviously, um, they would probably not actually...
actually really go after each other, like at all, because um, Monty the Python would actually be more interested in mammals, and Sirius wouldn't go after something so large, and actually he is quite a big friend of other snakes, because the black rats do hang out with a lot of different species, but I would have to say Sirius is much quicker and more agile, but Monty's such a chunky, uh, muscular guy that uh, there's not really anything serious to do. So Carla noticed that the skin at his head is different than the rest of him. So she was wondering, is that from shedding? Yes, that is from shedding. He's just a little frilled. At, uh, you can kind of see, uh, like, all oh, this is new skin. This is just kind of uh, his skin coming up. Oops, sorry, buddy. You can't see as well. So, um, but uh, basically right now it's kind of cloudy looking. Uh, because it's the um, old skin coming off. So John and Zachary would both like to know, how did we get him? Oh, great question. So he was born in captivity, um, and he came to us from another facility. Um, we obviously don't take any animals out of the wild unless, like, U.S. Fish and Wildlife is desperate for um, a breeding program or something because of the habitat loss or anything like that. Um, these guys were bred in captivity for the basics of education and making sure we still have a very diverse genetic population just to kind of ease off uh, the tensions of the wild since uh, there are still a decent bit of wild areas for these guys left because these guys can live in wetlands, prairies, forest, and all that. Um, but because of uh, humans and roads and all that, um, it's kind of hard for these guys to kind of cross those roadways uh, too often. So a lot of populations uh, are getting stuck. So it's good to try and ease tensions off the wild by helping out uh, the population with some captive stuff as well through reasonable uh, genetic breeding through our um, different zoo breeding programs we have through AZA. So Sydney would like to know how strong their bite is. So it's more the fact when you get bit by a, uh, a snake, which uh, a couple keepers here uh, have accidentally got nipped by Sirius because obviously anything with a mouth can bite. And he is a very overly excited snake, let's just say, on feeding day. And sometimes he misses uh, the prey and uh, latches onto the hand holding the tongs that's holding the prey. Um, the actual concept of getting bit by him, it's more like, oh my gosh, something is holding me with a mouth. This is weird, but it hurts way less than a bee sting. And really, it kind of feels like you have some rough Velcro on your arm. That's about it. So we're going to do three last questions. Okay. Carrie would like to know how fast can he swim? Oh, great question. Um... Unfortunately, I can't yeah, rattle off the miles per hour or whatever on uh, out of uh, my head, but I would say a brisk walk from a human. I've seen uh, black rats swim about that fast. Alice would like to know where his ears are. Uh, great question. So these guys actually really don't have any sort of ears as we know them. Uh, because these guys are on the ground, how they actually hear is through the vibrations in the ground so kind of that lower jaw as it kind of, as he kind of walks across the ground uh if a deer or something or a human is stomping by he can actually feel the vibrations that we give off and that kind of helps him uh here so obviously uh, it's always quite silly if you see people yelling get out of here snake because they are not actually able to hear that if you really want to yell at snakes to make sure they hear you very clearly or have them get out Stomp the ground. That's like yelling for them. Divian would like to know how long are they at the time of birth? Oh, great question. So they're normally either a foot uh, long. They're only probably oh six inches at the most. And um, a lot of uh, color changes happen from when they're first born to uh, kind of adulthood. So Sirius being Western black rat, he still has that white pattern on him, as I was saying, where the Easterns are kind of more jet black. The pattern's still there, but it's so dark you really can't see it. When they're first born, 
Uh, they're actually more of a white snake with black spots, and that's just because when they're first born, the habitat that they're hanging out in, trying to find the frogs and all that, are a little more in bright, maybe hanging out in the water a little more, so they need more of that kind of white and dark contrast. Whereas uh, once they get older and they're going after more squirrels and things like that, they kind of turn more jet black um, so that they can hide much better um, in uh, their uh, ambush areas. Um, I also want to remind everyone as we uh, start to close up, of course, our quest for the best um, is matching any donations you give to the zoo right now during uh, these uh, times uh, for four more days. So any donations we receive, they will match that donation as well. Just uh, because even though, of course, unfortunately, we're closed right now, that doesn't mean our animals still don't uh, want toys and food and all that good stuff as well. Um, our goal, of course, is making sure that even though the zoo is closed, the animals don't really notice too much of a difference. So everyone who has donated so far, thank you so much. Uh, it really means a lot to us. And for those that might not financially have the means right now, we're just happy that you could tune in with us today. Before I go, however, in a classic fashion, I do have one little joke for you for uh, our snake lovers out there. And it is, how do you measure a snake? In inches, because they don't have any feet. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Laura likes it. Uh, thank you guys uh, so much for tuning in to another Zoo School Live here at the Elmwood Park Zoo. Thank you guys so much for hanging with us during this time. And we can't wait to see you guys back here real soon. See ya.